Hi, this is Dave. One of the essential skills in calculus is the ability to see the relationship between a function, a function's first derivative, and a function's second derivative. And this problem from a recent uh, calculus final for my AB calculus class demonstrates this skill or tests this skill very much. And so I want to go over this problem. The figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of function f. The domain of f is a set of all real numbers x, such that x is greater than negative 3, but less than 5. And here we have the drawing it says uh, this y equals f prime of x. It's hard to see that f prime. It says, note, this is the graph of f prime, not the graph of f. And so let's look at our, I arranged this problem so that all parts A, B, C, and D will be on the same page. We can look at them simultaneously. We look at this graph and we, question A, for what values of X does F have a relative maximum? Why? Well, if we evaluate this function as F, well, what would a relative maximum be? Well, it would be a, a point on the curve uh, to the left of which the values are left and to the right of which are less and the, the right of which the values are less and so that would constitute a relative maximum but the problem is that we're this is a graph of f prime of x not of f so i tell my students about number lines that number lines are their friends so we're going to draw a number line to conceptually understand what's going on. And so here is a number line. And on the top of the number line, we're going to put F prime. And we're going to look for what we call critical numbers. And what is a critical number? Well, where F prime of X equals zero. And so we see critical numbers here at x equals negative 2 because that's where f prime is 0. We see also at x equals 1 a critical number because the value of f prime is 0. And we see also at x equals 4 that would constitute a critical number because the value of f prime touches the x-axis and therefore is 0. Next, we're going to evaluate um, the value of f prime on top of this number line and on bottom we're going to resultantly describe the behavior of the function f. And so all we look for is to the left of this critical number 2 or between negative 3 where we're starting in 2 is the value of f prime of x positive or negative. Well the value is positive so that means underlying the function is going to be increasing over that interval so we draw an upward arrow now these upward and downward arrows we draw are not going to be to scale but we're not trying to get scale we're just trying to conceptually see what's going on next we're going to we're going to look at the interval between the next two critical numbers between uh, negative two and one and we see that the value of f prime is below the x-axis so we therefore know that underlying the value of f over this interval between negative 2 and 1 is going down. So here we have a downward arrow. Um, next, we check the, between the next two critical numbers. We look between the critical number 1 and critical number 4. The function value of f prime of x is also below the x-axis, so that's negative. And so we have the underlying function value going down. And lastly, here we have at, at uh, critical number 4, between 4 and 5, we have f prime of x is emerged above the x-axis, so that's a plus sign, and we know that the underlying function is going up. And so now we have everything we need to, to answer quite easily part A and part B. And part A, for what values of x, does f have a relative maximum? Well, we can see that the arrow going up 
changes to arrow going down here at x equals negative 2. And so we know our relative maximum is at, I'll just make a little at sign, x equals negative 2. Why? Because f prime of x changes from uh, positive to negative. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the next uh, question B. For what values of x does f have a relative minimum? Why? Well, similarly to us finding the relative maximum here, a relative minimum is going to be found where f prime of x changes from negative to positive. So we'll say relative minimum at x equals 4. Why? Because f prime changes from negative to positive. Okay. Anyway, um, that should take care of of A and B pretty easily. Let's go ahead and shift gears a little bit to look at part C and what intervals is the graph of F concave upward. So now we're going to look at our F double prime of X and likewise, you know, we don't have enough room to draw one directly below, but we'll draw one over here. What we're looking for in F double prime and we're going to see what resultantly happens to f below, is we look for what we call PPOIs. And a PPOI equals potential point of inflection. inflection. Okay, point of inflection. And that would be, we look for where we're looking at the slope of the f prime of x. And we see that between x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1, the slope of f prime of x is, is negative. And so our uh, PPOI, our potential point of inflection, first one is going to be negative 1. And then we go the the value of the function is increasing all the way up to x equals 1, or the slope, rather. And so that will be a, a, a second potential point of inflection. The next, between 1 and 3, the slope of the function is negative. So that will be a third possible point of inflection at x equals 3. And do you see that the potential point of inflections are not the same? as the critical numbers that we found over here in blue. So let's go ahead and uh, see underlying what, if, if they're positive or negative. We see between uh, negative 3 and negative 1, the slope is going downward, so that's uh, negative. And so we therefore say that between uh, negative 3 and negative 1, we have a frowny face. That's concave down. Next, between negative 1 and 1, we have the slope of f prime of x increasing. So that's going to be a smiley face, concave up. Between 1 and 3, we have the function f prime of x going downward, the slope downward. So we say that is uh, negative. And so the, uh, that would be concave down between 1 and 3, and lastly, if we go to the right of 3, we see the function, uh, the slope of f prime is positive, so we say that has upward concavity over this interval from 3 to 5, and so we draw this upward smiley face. And so, uh, on what intervals is the graph of f concave upward? Well, we're going to be able to answer this. We, we have concave upward We'll say f is 
concave up on, we'll use interval notation here, negative 1, comma 1, and 3, comma 5, because um, f, now it says, use f prime to justify your answer, because f prime is, is positive on these intervals. Okay, uh, lastly, I don't know, students really had a problem with this last part where we needed to sketch. Part D, suppose that f of 1 equals 0. Draw a sketch that shows the general shape of the graph of the function f on open interval between 0 and 2. And here we are given a point of f, f of 1 equals 0. So we go to x equals 1 and the value will be zero here at this point. So that's the only point we're given on this entire exercise. So we're going to conceptually see what's happening between zero and two to be able to draw a conceptual sketch. It won't be a, a purely accurate sketch because we, we don't have enough values for that. But let's go ahead and look at the function. Uh, we see that between zero and 1, for this section right here, the function is going downward. And in what manner is the function going downward? If we look between 0 and 1 over here on the f double prime, we see that we have a concave up or smiley face. So we're going to be going down over this whole interval and concave up, which means that it's going to be a upward shaped curve, something like this, okay? So that's going to be, that's going to take care of between 0 and, and 1, x equals 0, x equals 1. Now let's look at this next section between, um, between 1 and 2. We see that the function, the value of the function is still going downward over that interval. So we have kind of two sections here, and concavity well, we here, remember one of our points of inflection here is going to be at, at 1 because we have a change of concavity here. Well, here at x equals 1, we're going to start going concave downward. And so starting it, it'll, the function will look something like this. We'll go down, and this is just the section we've been covered. And so you might ask yourself, well, what in the heck happened here at x equals 1? Well, like, what this looks like is you have an interval. It looks like the, the slope gradually became, uh, the negative slope became lower and lower and lower or closer and closer to zero. And at zero, uh, f prime of x, uh, at one, excuse me, x equals one, f prime of x is zero. So this would represent likely a horizontal tangent line. And then the negative slope will resume uh, from 1 on to, uh, what, 4. So I hope this is, analysis has been helpful. These number lines are great because conceptually they really break it down so we can see what's happening. Thanks for viewing.